everybody, welcome to Foundations TV. Our guest today is Max ZT, who I met last weekend and I saw him play a very nice instrument called Hammer Dulcimer. And that is actually what intrigued me the most was because that instrument that he was playing is the one that he has built himself. And while he was playing it, there was not only the joy of playing, I think there was also a joy of being able to play something that you have built with your own hands. So here we are today with somebody who is uh, a music lover and uh, who has spent the last 10 years of his life traveling for music, learning, growing, uh, his heart as well as his mind, all focused towards this beautiful instrument, hammered dulcimer. And, uh, love to interview Max ZT. Welcome to Foundations TV, Max. Uh, thanks so much for being with us today. No, of course. Thank you. So I can see that you're uh, traveling with family. I can see the sun uh, shining on your face as well. Oh, it's the West Coast. It's amazing. It's, uh, I, got, I, I left yesterday. It was like 15 degrees and I'm wearing long johns and I show up in California. I was like, ah, okay, well, this, made, this I get it now. <laughs> this is why people come out here. Yeah, that's true. That's true. We'd love to. We'd love to. It's so cold over here in Boston right now. Yeah. Um, okay, Max, so it was actually really wonderful meeting you last week um, at the concert. I saw you play your instrument, uh, the Hammer Delsimer, and uh, just by watching you play, you know, I could see that you were really enjoying it, and it was uh, such a joyful way of playing everybody. It was, the joy was reflecting all over uh, the room, and everyone really, really enjoyed that concert. Uh, so tell us something about the instrument, and tell us um, when and how did you fall in love with it? Well, it's an instrument called the Hammer Delsimer. Um, which is originally uh, actually a Persian instrument, which is called Santur. Um, and India has a version of it as well called Santur. Yes. Um, there's also all over all over the world there are different versions in Eastern and Western Europe, um, even in Brazil and China and Southeast Asia. You'll find um, you'll find a version of it, um, a very ancient pre-Bible uh, instrument. And um, in the American form is mostly used for American folk music, uh -huh. uh, which was which was this is my background for a long period of time uh, before I went to college. Um, I studied mostly American folk music and Irish music. Okay. Uh, and then at college, I got really fascinated with um, music from West Africa, from Senegal. And so at, when I guess when I was 19, I moved to Senegal um, and lived there back and forth. I was traveling there so many times uh, over a period of six years, um, trying to understand what, what that music really uh, is. Uh -huh. And it's a, very, it's a very long conversation that we get into, I'm sure. Um, throughout the interview, but it's um, it was a very fascinating form of music. Uh, then I moved to New York and found out about Indian classical music. Uh, eventually, getting a, a grant from the American Institute of Indian Studies um, to go to Mumbai and study with uh, Pandaji Shiv Kumar Shama, and that's where I met um, Aditya. And, and uh, 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 yeah, that's it, just been a, it's been a pleasure okay. to be uh, connected with him. So you've been traveling uh, to various places all around the world. Since yeah, definitely. Since I was, um, I guess, for about ten years now, I've been, I've been feeling that like immersion is really the only way to, I guess, really understand something that's a little deeper than just something that's uh, on paper, that's academic. You know, yeah. if you want to study something that uh, is an oral tradition, yeah. you have to go to where they speak it, where they live it. Yeah. You know, if it's if it's uh, the culture is is communicating with the with the way of life and the music is communicating with the way of life then the only way to really do it is to be a part of that way of life Wonderful. so um, yeah that's that's kind of what music has kind of yeah. taught me yeah, yeah. yeah. that's beautiful so uh, the the particular instrument the hammer dulcimer that you were playing are you told me that you were the one who built it yourself correct I got really um, I've been really into building these instruments recently uh, my first time was in 2007. Um, there's, a, there's a dulcimer builder by the name of David Lindsay um, out of uh, Oklahoma, okay. and he's he's kind of considered one of the best, um, if not the best, in the country. Mm -hmm. And I befriended him when I was like 12, and uh, we just he's kind of been family at this point. And then in 07, um, I moved out to Oklahoma to build instruments and apprenticed with him. And I've been out there uh, twice, and I'm actually going again in uh, January for a third trip to kind of modify, uh, we have our own custom design and this, uh, by adding strings and adding, uh, adding pickups um, so that I can amplify the instrument um, and a whole bunch of different options. 
um, that we're trying to do with the tuning and the construction and the technique and all that stuff. Built building it has been able to really uh, show me the knowing just more knowledge about the instrument, and it's been able to show me what uh, if I have a problem with the tuning, how to fix it. If I have a problem yeah. with uh, any of the construction stuff, I know that's not a big deal. I'll take a hammer to it and hit it. Yeah. You know, it's like <laughs> hammer. All the little things. Yeah. Well, well, exactly. And being able to uh, being able to just know the instrument that much deeper is. Um, is really awesome. Yeah. So wh why is it called yeah. hammered? Uh, because there's a there's a there's another version of the instrument. Yeah. Um, called the mountain dulcimer, um, okay. or the Appalachian dulcimer. This okay. is something that you play in your lap, and it's like a four stringed instrument that you pluck. Okay. Um, the hammered dulcimer. I don't know why it's actually the same name, but the hammered dulcimer is what you saw me playing, and yeah. I hit it. Um, going back to uh, the instruments, do you play any other instruments as well? Um, at, at college, you know, I learned a little um, piano and uh, and uh, uh, doing a lot of percussion, obviously, because there's a lot of percussion element to my instrument. Um, there's another instrument um, called the kalimba, which is this uh, kind of like thumb piano. Okay. Um, and that's mostly found in South East Africa. Okay. Uh, I get really exposed to this instrument uh, just by hearing it in the U.S. And I went to this amazing music shop in Chicago that had all these amazing versions of this instrument. It's basically, I might even, I think I even have it here. Yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah. Perfect. So this instrument right here oh, cool. is another yeah. instrument uh, um, that I play. Wow. And it's, uh, I'm not anywhere from the dulcimer, but it's, um, it's pocket, it's pocket sized. So cool. <laughs> I like it. So do you, how often do you play? Do you play with bands, or where exactly do you play? I know there's a lot of accomplishments in your name as well, so I'd love to hear about those. Sure. Um, I, uh, I play almost um, play about 10 shows a week in New York at this point. Um, wow. So it's, it's, it's pretty much uh, all time uh, a hus hustle. And New York, it kind of has to, you have to just constantly be pushing all the time yeah. um, to keep the momentum going. and. Uh, and there's so many different bands out there from uh, doing stuff with my own band. My own band's name is House of Waters. Um, and then also playing with Aritya and playing with a bunch of other different people that are just coming on uh, through tour um, or folk artists or you name it. You know, the instrument is such a dynamic instrument. It can be used in so many different uh, fields. Yeah. Um, that and it can it can produce a number of roles, whether it be like a lead instrument or a textural instrument or a, 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 a just like a like a rhythmic instrument. There's a lot of different places where it can fit, and nobody really plays it. <laughs> so uh, all the gigs that would go to dulcimers kind of come to me. <laughs> cool, cool. <laughs> it's so pretty I, funny. Yeah. So I I saw you play, and uh, like I said before, you know, there was a very joyful feeling around you when you were playing. The whole body mm. was kind of you know, feeling the music and enjoying it, and, and that was being reflected all around the concert hall. So uh, I'm sure every time you play, people love watching you. So what's your favorite been so far? Has there been at least, you know, one concert or something special, a memory that that you would love to, uh, you know, go back to or maybe <laughs> replay or recreate that mood? Um, um, that's a hard one. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure I can think of right now actually like a specific concert. Um, the thing with music is because it's you're always you're always learning yeah. new stuff. Yeah. So any any time I listen to like old concerts, I'm like, oh, that's terrible, because you know I've learned something new since then. It's yeah. not. It's clearly just me being judgmental, and that's not terrible. But it's uh, uh, it's hard to look for to the past for uh, images of the ideal. Mm. Performing a concert in a, in a, 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 a venue or a place where the subtleties of it can come across because it can be very flashy, it can be very fast, very like you know um, loud, uh, which is awesome, and this is it brings this whole like high energy element to the to the to the concert. But um, if you can get to a place where you can really hear just like all the overtones and all the subtleties that are involved in the instrument. And that's really something that I, I always try to find. Um, I'm getting, I mean, for me, 
yeah, I'm sitting in front of the instrument, so I'm hearing every single thing yeah. from that the instrument is producing. All the weird little overtones, the notes I don't even hit start ringing, yeah. you know, um, because of the vibrations of the instrument. Yeah. And I want that to be translated to the audience, which is very hard. Yeah. So often it needs to be in a, a listening room environment, a, um, kind of like the concert we had, you know, as opposed to a club or a bar or a, um, even a large concert hall. Yeah. Um, what I actually probably would prefer is just like a living room with 20 friends yeah. and on a carpet, you know, and sitting on the ground and yeah. just kind of really being there um, all together and, yeah. and hitting up all the nuances. The same with tabla, it's the same with every single instrument yeah. has this, um, has these subtle nuances that are very difficult to translate to um, when amplified, I guess. Yeah. That's so, so that's, that's kind of, I'm sorry, it's not the, I didn't give you a, a specific concert, um, that was the best, but um, yeah, just being able to he to hear all the nuances and, uh, yeah, no, of, but of the instrument. Yeah, that, that's a neat answer because it tells me that you're aiming for perfection, and that's uh, you know you do enjoy every single concert just as much as you would enjoy you know playing for yourself or playing for friends or uh, playing for uh, an unknown audience. So uh, that tells me that you you truly love music and you truly love what oh, you're yeah. doing. So that's that's what it is. So that's cool. That's really good. So. Before we um, end this interview, would you like to say something to the viewer about our masters or anything that you would like to tell them? Sure. When I, um, when I was in Senegal, I, I had this amazing experience with this, uh, this medicine man um, on Goree Island, which is this island right off the coast of Dakar. Uh -huh. um, and he taught me this really amazing, uh, almost like philosophical analogy. Um, I can get, it's, it's very a long, long story, but um, basically the idea was to, he was talking specifically about music, but then he kind of made it sound like life in general, yeah. that basically in addition to your technique, in addition to the time that you spend, um, to, you know, perfection, um, you also need to look towards your heart, and you have to grow your heart uh, at an equal pace as you grow your technique. Wow. And... At the time, I you know, uh, I was um, in and out of music school, so there were a dozen, uh, thousands of people that I know and still know that are monster technicians with their instruments. You know, how many tablet players you know that can play? You know, that's great. But how many tablet players you know that can do that and also have the uh, heart behind it, so that yeah. actually even only one note is all you need uh, to to communicate to your audience and. Uh, as much as you grow your your uh, your technique, you have to grow your your heart behind it, and it feel, and you also you can't just do the heart either. You know, if you have all this heart and you don't have your technique, then how are you going to communicate it either? If I, if yeah. you have all these things going on in your head that yeah. you want to be able to communicate, yeah. but uh, you can only play, you know, eighth notes that 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 are something. I don't know. You can only play something that's uh, that's not going to allow it. To come out, then that's something you also have to um, focus on, yeah. and so kind of grow them together. Yeah. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That makes sense, and actually can be uh, extrapolated to everything in life. You know, anything everything. you're learning, um, you you have to continue to grow your heart um, because if you don't put your heart and mind together into something, it's just not going to be right. So Definitely, um, and it's heart and mind, and it's 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 use your brain and get your your technique and spend the time that you need to do that um, up, but. Uh, with with your with time spent looking inward as well. Excellent, excellent. All right, that that actually wraps up our interview for today. So that was well, great. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for your time. That was so wonderful.